All right, hello and welcome to Swing It and Ding It, an iHeartMedia podcast. This is Moose with Mays and Matthews as we head towards the playoffs, Harry. The playoffs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talking cheer, about playoffs? Cheer the Jim Mora cut. <laughs> Always. Uh, that is something that will just never go away. Oh. It shouldn't because it's no. incredible. Too no, that, that was one of the most popular drops back in the day on the radio station at, in a certain time of year. Oh, yeah. Oh, just sure. had to have it. Definitely, definitely. But there was a tournament that had a lot of implications for the playoffs. It turned to be kind of a whole lot about nothing, which usually is the case, right? You think like all these guys can get in and out, but it just just doesn't happen like that. Uh, but Lucas Glover did get in, right? He uh, he he wins. He knocks out Austin Eckroat, who was uh, on the on the bubble, and, and now is at seventy one. He goes two under sixty eight for a two shot win over Russell Henley and Ben on. Um, he goes from 112 to 49. So yeah. quite a quite a jump. And then, you know, a lot of the story, we'll t- we'll talk about Lucas and his win, but you know, Adam Scott misses the playoffs for the first time in his career. I think it's 17 years. 16 years. Yeah. 16 year playoff career streak comes to an end. How about yep. that? Halton. Yep. And then you have um, you know, Horschel goes 62, 63. Um, he comes in fourth. He needed a second or better, man. Yeah. He was taking a run going after it. And then obviously the, the biggest name is JT, right? He has that birdie chip on 18 that if it falls, he's in and it hits the flag. He, collapse, he needed collapse. nine points, right? That's like when, you know, for me, when I at work, like we miss a budget, it's like, we missed it by $2,000. If we would have, you know, he missed it by nine points. If he would have been one place higher at some point during the year, yeah, he's in, but you know, yep. just a just a you know, some good drama, um, leading into the playoffs, which are more confined this year at 70 golfers. But uh, Harry, what did you think about the Wyndham Championship? Well, I, I thought it was pretty good. I love that golf course, and and I like Lucas Glover. He's a guy that that I always like to see play well. He's had his struggles. He's had injuries. You know, it's the guy that won the U.S. Open way back in 2009 for his second win on tour. And you're thinking like, wow, man, this guy might you know be one of these young guys that great ball striker will set the world on fire. It didn't happen. I mean, they, but he got his fifth win. And like you said, he moved into the FedEx Cup playoffs and is his first win since the 20, uh, 21 John Deere. He makes par on his finer four holes after the rain delay. And, and you know, Russell Henley went in a tank after that rain delay. He made three straight bogeys to finish up. And really, that was that's why we didn't have really any drama. I mean, I would have loved a playoff between those oh, yeah. two and extra golf as we went into the evening. But you didn't get it. But uh you know, he's had a win and three top six finishes since switching putters to that broom handle lab mez dot one, I think is how you call it. It's a strange name, uh, but it's the same thing that Adam Scott uses. And I understand that our friend Brad Faxon had a little something to do with Lucas Glover making the putter change, Danielle. Wow. Yeah, he works with uh, Jason Bale over at Jupiter Hills. And as you guys know, we Jason's a friend of the show. Jason, Brad, and Lance all work with him. And yeah, they've been working on his butter, trying to figure it out. And, you know, maybe that is the new jailbird that everybody is out hunting for, <laughs> right. right? We are going to see a bunch of uh, guys with this new style putter. So yeah. we shall see. But That's just goes to know. show you that it fits everybody. Right. You know, it, every putter fits somebody differently. Whatever works for Moose isn't going to work for me. Right. That's exactly what I was going to say. To me, that's a sign of a great teacher, right? Someone mm-hmm. that doesn't try to squeeze you into a box, but, you know, lets you play the equipment or the swing that you have and just helps you try to improve it. So, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that definitely, definitely stood out to me. Danielle, you you know, you were on property uh, earlier in the week. And, and what were your takeaways of the golf course? Like, what did you see going into it that, um, you know, stood out from a golf course perspective? I actually kind of really liked the golf course. Obviously yeah. it was only following one group. So um, B unfortunately missed the cut. I think the both got, or maybe one guy got through in his group, but um, I, I just kind of remember going back to you talking about JT on, on 18. Like I know exactly where that pin placement was because on Thursday it was just a little bit back further to the left. So I could like exactly like know exactly how that undulation went there. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think the course was anything like crazy. It was a joy to walk, but obviously playing it is a a completely, um, different story, but, um, I kind of wish I was there for the weekend to see all this, this drama unfold. Um, I did want to highlight real quick because you guys know how I follow my corn fairy guys and all the rookies and everything else. So um, there's so many rules that even I have to keep up with. I don't know if it's a challenge for you guys to keep up with, but we know how like the top 70 of the tour come down and the top 
70 from the Corn Ferry go up. So from those 70, only seven made it to the FedEx Cup playoffs, being Ben on our guy, Eric Cole, Thomas Dietrich, Taylor Montgomery, Sam Stevens, which I was like, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but I feel like he's sneaky snuck in this oh, yeah, year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Vincent Norman, and then obviously Ben Griffith. So this, I have to go in a little bit more. His girlfriend, Dana, posted a story of him on her Instagram story. And it just reminded me of like a college NFL player like this, like, you know, hand in, in palm or head in the hand of his palm, like looking to be like, am I going to be drafted? Am I oh. going to be drafted? And he's just watching, refreshing the scores and has the TV up in the back. Because what, after JT missed, you know, it hit the flagstick, ricocheted off falls to the ground and misses it. And that's eventually what got um, Ben wow. Griffin in. Mm. But what was it like three hours until it was finalized until it <laughs> the tournament. So he's sitting there like refreshing, refreshing. It's kind of like probably how we feel all the time, refreshing right. scores or watching yep. shot link, you know, and it literally just seeing the stress and everything on Ben, it literally looked like, and a you know, college NFL player on draft day, like, Oh my God, where am I going? Am I getting in? And he ended up getting in. So that was pretty cool because wow. he had he had missed the cut at Sedgefield um, and then ended up just sneaking in uh, at that number 70 spot. So it's pretty cool and Good excited to watch what this crew of the, you know, the bottom 70 does uh, oh, yeah. to the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Harry, any other big takeaways from either guys in or out of the tournament or Lucas? Uh, well, you know, you, you mentioned Horschel. Webb Simpson is yeah. another guy who didn't do enough. I mean, he was way, way behind. He had, you know, he had to win and maybe – that I don't even know if that would have gotten him in. Uh, but uh, Lowry, too. Shane Lowry missed out. He was another guy that I kind of thought at the beginning of the year was going to have a pretty decent year and and make it through. And, and of course, uh, you mentioned Adam Scott. It's hard to believe because I th when I think back on Adam Scott's year, I think he was kind of in the hunt a yeah. lot. And he made yeah. a lot of cuts and he made, you know, top 25s. It's still. Right. How's Matt Kuchar in and he's not? Uh... Right. Right. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Kuchar, I think Kuchar's now the guy with the longest streak, yeah. isn't he? Uh, yeah. You know, as far as yeah. making it. But yeah, I mean, that, that's a great pull by you. So, you know, I, I kind of thought Adam Scott had a great year. Just goes to show you this 125 to 70 makes a lot of difference. And I just want to chime in and say this, because we know that our boy Austin Ekro did not make playoffs. Mm -hmm. This just goes to show you how hard golf is. Austin, he got... Uh, one second place finish. He had three top tens, six top 25s, and wow. still misses playoffs. Wow. I mean, Ben, he had, I don't have his in front of me, but he got, I think, finished twice second and still got in on the number. Wow. That's how that's how hard this game is. Or at you least know, crazy. the PGA well, Tour. Good stuff. Great drama. I think it's it's so cool, like the way it happens now with with being more confined and heading into the playoffs. And then, you know, we'll see what happens uh, uh, this week in Memphis and see if these guys are able to capitalize. But uh, let's take a quick break and we will be right back with more. All right. And welcome back to Swing It and Ding It. We are joined by Kat Ramirez from Golfing Buddy. Um, very, very excited to talk to you, Kat, uh, about how this came about you know, what you guys are up to lately. I mean, you know, all, the, the tagline basically is join, match, connect, and play more golf, right? Which is what we all want to do. And I think this is a cool way to do it. So talk about how this whole thing came about. Yeah, so I'm from the Midwest. So my husband and I are golfers. We love golfing. We're not pros like you guys. Apparently, you guys are pros. No, far <laughs> from it. Not even close. We know pros, but we're not. Yeah. Yeah. I know uh, a lot of pros. Yeah. Yeah, but we're casual golfers. And it's six months out of the year that it's winter here. So whenever in the summer, you want to play golf, right? As much as it's beautiful. And one weekend, it was super beautiful. I couldn't play because I'm an entrepreneur. My husband dying to play. I said, hey, call your buddies. Couldn't find anybody all weekend. Can you believe that to golf? Hmm. And so I said, hey, wouldn't it have been cool if there was an app or a website where you could find a golfing buddy and then you didn't have to play alone or you didn't have to sit at home because he's not the kind of guy that would go by himself. So mm -hmm. thus, woo, golfing buddy <laughs> app is born. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, golfing buddy to me is a, a little more than that, because as a female and minority, it's really hard to play golf, especially as a beginner. And the intimidation is overwhelming. Okay. It's way too much. And I'll, I'll tell you that, you know, even when we go play together and we get paired with somebody and we're not early morning golfers, so we're not with the serious guys, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we're probably mid afternoon, you know, 10, 11, 
you know, golfers. And, you know, if just the cringe factor, if we get set up with someone and, and for instance, one time we got set up and the two guys never said one word to me at all, the Mm. whole time. And so my husband and we, you know, paid for 18 holes. And by the turn, I said, you know, this is not fun for me. And he was okay with that. And he's like, you know what, let's just, you know, have a drink and then leave and, you know, we'll be done with it. But that happens a lot. It happens to a lot of people. And I think the big thing is, you know, golf courses need to understand and know that if you're not paired correctly, you're never going to come back ever, Right. right. Ever, you know, and yeah. I, I want people to be empowered to find their own golfing buddy to pair themselves up with people just like them. So really adding more diversity, more inclusion on the golf course so that people do feel welcome and they feel comfortable golfing. Yeah, that's interesting you bring that up because a lot about golf or what's fun about it is who you play with. And if you're matched or paired with you playing with buddies that you're really comfortable with, chances are you're going to have a better day. And like you said, you're going to be more willing to want to get out there again. But how does your app, because there are other apps, how does your app target maybe what would be a better pairing or a better match for the person? Yeah. So when you create an account, you know, very similar to any other type of profiling account, you have to put in, you know, do I want to play with, you know, other guys or girls or both? Or do, you know, am I a fun golfer, walker? Am I a nine hole, 18 hole? There's, you can, there's an optional for score, but it's not the premise. The premise is about personality and what do you like and what do you want to do? You know, are you a beer drinker when you golf? Are you a cigar smoker? Are you a jokester? Are you a gambler? You know, those wow. things that are important, right? Those things that are really you important. You just mentioned moose right there in those <laughs> last four or five uh, descriptions. <laughs> yeah. And so then when people go on, then it will match them with those people that they want to be matched with. So similar to them. Or they can change their match. You know, they can change it based on if they have an event and they need to find a golfing buddy for that professional event. Right. Um, so it is really does on the back end does the matching and all the hard work and on the front end, people just need to upload and know, you know, to tick all the marks so that they get paired accordingly. Um, But, you know, to me, the biggest part is, you know, I want to play with someone just like me and it really is hard to find people just like me because if I'm not on a golf course every day, how am I going to find that person? Right. Yeah. So what is the radius? How many states are you in? How many people are on the app? And, you know, if any of our listeners, um, you know, are looking for a golfing buddy and yeah. go on and register, what is the likelihood that they're getting paired with somebody um, with a certain square mile, uh, square radius, <laughs> square mile radius? No worries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are a startup. So as a startup, we have now 2000 on the app and 2000 on our Facebook group. That's great. Awesome. To, and to me, that's a huge feat, you know, for some, yeah. you know, for an organization, that's a startup, um, the diversity or the, where it is, uh, geographic is all over. Mostly though, it's going to be the, the Florida, Texas, uh, LA, um, what is it? Arizona. Arizona. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's mostly the the sunny states, but yeah, Florida really, you know, that just surprises me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Florida <laughs> golf, <laughs> no way. And Chicago, like, there's big cities. Like, there are a lot of places where people are just looking for golfing buddies. And I like to see the anomalies. I do like to see the the small, out of nowhere, you know, Idaho or Iowa. You know, I do like to see that. And people do message me and they say, hey, nobody here, nobody's here in my area. And I always message back, hey, I just upgraded you for a free account for a whole year. If you can help me get the word out, that would be awesome. You know, very awesome. cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think about it, too. Um, you know, if I were to move, if I would have, to have right. to move to a different state for work. Right. Like this is something that I would be all over like hey i don't really know anyone yet it's a great way to meet people right. and, and and network or also like traveling for work yeah. right if i have to go somewhere for a week or two weeks and you know want to get out and play and with someone who's like-minded and i know i'm going to have fun with guaranteed instead of like that oh god who am i going to be paired up with as a single yeah. you know right. yeah. and it's it's like a 50 50 shot so that that is a, a really cool aspect and i'm sure that's a big part of what you guys do 
Oh yeah. And I, you know, and I look at the banter. I love the banter on the Facebook group because people going back and forth, Hey, I'm playing this weekend. Anybody can come join me, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and it's just fun to see the engagement in the banter and how all this comes together. You know, that's cool. And I, obviously the app I, I imagine is available any, everywhere you can get apps, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. So yep. download the app, but also the website's golfingbuddy.info. You're on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, your Twitter's at golfing buddy underscore, and then on Instagram at golfing dot buddy. But you, you know, it's th this is really cool, and I love how you target it too towards you know women, minorities, you know, parents of junior golfers. That's got to be, okay. you know, something that's really intimidating. You know, you you want your son or daughter, you know, who's experiencing the game, and uh, you want them to be, you know enjoy it and this is a big part of find somebody you know who, who they would enjoy playing with and then you also go with disabled and beginners and if you know beginners that's the other thing you know along with juniors but i find it even like when i first joined a club i was so intimidated to like you know maybe go up and ask somebody to you know to play because it's it golf is an intimidating thing. It really is. You'd want to, it's hard to do and you, you don't want to, um, you don't want to infringe on the people you're playing with. If you're playing maybe poorly that day, it's, it's, there's a lot going on. So I, yeah. I love this stuff. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned that, that um, if you belong to a club, because I have people that make this interpretation that they belong to a club and now they're part of this elite society and they can golf <laughs> with anyone. And it's funny how many people have joined Golfing Buddy that are club members that say, hey, I'm a part of this club. Anybody want to golf with me? Because right. I have no one to play with. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, we will make sure we post everything in, in our socials, linking you guys, Golfing Buddy. Um, you know, it, it, the easiest way is just to download the app, I would imagine, right? And just learn all about it or go to the website and learn about, you know, what might fit you first. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. That was fantastic. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah, Thanks for joining us. Good luck with the app. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. All right, and welcome back to Swing It and Ding It. Pretty cool uh, concept. I love a nice entrepreneur in the game of golf. There's so mm -hmm. much of it popping up, and it's like, okay, this thing, I could see why this works, right? There's yeah. a need. They're filling it. Um, yeah, great great stuff. So uh, interested to see how this grows and, and learn some more for sure. Well, I'll tell you what. I learned something uh, last week at Beth Page Black. Mm. that there are incredibly difficult golf courses in this country, and oh, yeah. uh, I should probably not play them. Too <laughs> I mean, first, what an incredible experience. Like I, if anyone has a chance to do it, go do it. Right. Regardless of your skill level, like go enjoy it and see all that it has to offer. The cool part is it's a New York state park. It's a public course, right? The, the locker, the clubhouse, the facilities, it's all like, you know, not high bare bones, stuff. bare right. bones. It is. Yeah. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough. Greeny's brother, Eric, uh, lives there. So he was able to set the advanced tea time. But when we were leaving at 530 or whatever time it was, six o'clock, there were people camped out for the next day to get the no first way. tee times. Wow. So every day of the golfing season, there's hundreds of people camped out trying to get on this course. There's five courses there, but, yeah. you know, people want to play the black course. Um, and it's walking only. Walking only. Um, we were fortunate enough because there's limited caddies, but we reserved in advance. So we had two caddies. Uh, like I said, it was Greeny, myself, Eric, and then Factor, you know, Fat Factor. Money. Who did a little Twitter takeover oh, for us? You know, I saw. Yeah, and I was gonna say, Moose, walk us through some of it. I've seen some Instagram stories of you too. Let's let's yeah, talk a well, little bit about here's your experience. the crazy part. Like, if if people said to me, "What's the? We know it's challenging. What's the hardest part? Right? Obviously, the rough, the length, the hills, but the bunkering on this course is just it's incredible. They are everywhere. They are steep. Mm -hmm. They are they roll into each other. So you have to be not only long, but you have to be precise if you're off in the rough it is really hard um it is you know a lot of undulation um but just so much fun like more wide open than i expect yeah right like you know you can find your ball whether you can play it out and and you know right. have to hack out and get it to the fairway um you can but you know those guys you know fact money's a single digit you know greenies is a single digit they, they play well but like even at that you're gonna have, to have your best round to you know to break 90 there yeah. um but it was uh it was a blast so much fun so That's much awesome. fun being up there now the interesting part is <clears throat> so the caddies it, it's almost like the upside down like nothing makes sense there like you just throw out throw out everything you know about golf because it's just something is off 
like the putting, you're like, all right, how's this break? Like, like two cups. He's like, no, nope, straight at it. They call it no break Beth page. Really? And they said like the rest of the course is so hard. They feel like they try to make the greens a little easier, but doing that almost makes it harder because like, you're like, you're how does head. this not break? <laughs> right. Right. And it doesn't break. Yeah. So <clears throat> just so cool. Really, really cool place. Um, you know, can't wait to get back up there eventually, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Now, did you drive up the day of and drive home the day? Uh, yeah, we were going to, we thing? thought we were going to have a morning time. We didn't get a time until two 30. So that was cool. We were able to drive up. And the problem right. was we got there very early. We went and got some New York bagels, um, you know, but then you're sitting there and you're looking at that first tee for hours and mm -hmm. it's like, Oh God, <laughs> like you're watching. Well, imagine camping off. out and looking yeah. at that yeah. for 13 yeah. hours. And they had, so they're hosting the Ryder Cup in, uh, right. I guess it's 25. So they had all the Ryder Cup merch in there. I bought a couple cool. things. Of course. Right. I, I, I walked out with a bag, you know, not, <laughs> nothing, nothing crazy. They didn't have a lot of my size. I'm boosting uh, the economy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we had a blast. Always fun to play with Fact Money and Greeny and his brother, Eric. Uh, great group and uh, good caddies. Good caddies. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were fun. They, uh, you know took care of the heavy part, which was the most important. Cause I can't imagine walking and carrying your bag on that. Yeah. Course. Like mm. it, it would be very difficult. Probably a lot of push Don't talk to me right? about walking yeah. and carrying a bag. I had to yeah. stack that <laughs> for 36 holes. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. But a lot of fun, you know, it's weird. Like sometimes there, I was out there and I, like, I saw a little bit of like Philly cricket, right? Oh. Well, it's the same designer. Same designer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Right. Like that's like Baltus Rawl, wi yeah. winged foot. Yeah. Yep. Same thing. Yep. Every now yep. and then I was like, Oh, I, this has a little similarity to familiar? it. Yeah. 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 I mean, just a blast. Just just a lot of fun. So That's and awesome. then I would play with our friend John Clark uh on Monday I over at St. David's for the Ed Snyder Youth Hockey Foundation outing. What a beautiful place that is. That was the sure. first time playing there. Great course. You ever play there? No, I never played there. I've driven past it. It's not it's not far from my house. Is that their um, first year doing it there? Um, they have like a series of events. So I'm not sure if if I, I mean they play like Mary and around like they play like the top courses too. So yeah. I'm not sure exactly where that falls in, but um, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And Kevin Rafferty, former uh, Villanova basketball player, who's mm. in our group too. So two tallest guys in the course with John yeah. Clark and Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Rafferty. But we played played pretty well. Played pretty well. And then tomorrow is my uh, AC uh, AC golf trip. So playing Renault in the morning, Sea View in the afternoon, and then playing Great Bay. If you remember, we had Frank Rocco on from uh, Great Bay, who, who took over ownership. So dying to check that place right. out on Friday. So oh, that's awesome. Looking forward to it. I've played Stay all three of those. Stay tuned to the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. If I could shake this little sinus infection I have, things will be yeah. beautiful. Man, these sinus so. infections just—it's a recurring thing here. Moose. Yeah, well, I mean, it's been like six months. Or... So something's been working, but my oh. whole house was sick for a week, so I knew I was going to come. But hopefully, I'll fight it off. But we'll be all right. S sick or not, though, you're not going to turn down being America's guest this summer. No, 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 no way, no way. And and what I hope is that these courses is there are plenty of places to go to the bathroom because that's a huge yeah. topic in golf right now, right? Oh my! And yeah. one of the top players in the world. <laughs> doesn't care about what well, Danielle. He doesn't want more money. He doesn't need more perks. He just needs a porta potty on every hole. <laughs> exactly. John Rahm in uh, yesterday's presser, he goes, I can tell you right now, my priorities are a lot lower than what a lot of people would think. He continues, if I have to, if I go by request, I know this is going to sound very stupid, but as simple as having a freaking porta potty on every hole. I know it sounds crazy, but I can't choose when I have to go to the bathroom. I've told the tour this many times. It's mm. as simple as that. And Harry and I, ahead of the show, we're talking. Half the times I'm afraid to drink water when I'm out there because I'm like, when's the next time I'm going to have right. a chance to use the restroom? It's And we heard uh, Ricky, what? Yeah. I, I yeah. remember like three tournaments ago, he's like, I'm going to tell you what. He's like, you might not want to hear it, but it was uncomfortable coming in. He bogeyed like, the final two holes uh, of, I think it was Friday, where he was playing the front nine last as his last nine. And he bogeyed the final two holes because he had to go to the bathroom. He carries that huge water bottle too, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and also, especially this time of year it's like 95 plus degrees out there yeah. it's so hot you have to hydrate. stay hydrated yeah. and there's coolers on everyone but i'm telling you i think last week i maybe only saw three or four players um restrooms and at max and mm. that's over the course of 18 holes wow yeah wow so. so there was there was a little bit more news it seems like a lot of nothing right there was a players meeting not many showed up. You still should Jay be the guy? Should Jay not be the guy? Um, Tom Hoagie, you know, had a, had a soundbite saying he still doesn't know if this deal actually will happen. So, you know, then you have the Tiger news with Tiger joining the board. So there is still a lot of swirl going on for this and a lot to be figured out. 
And a couple of big names endorsed Monaghan, from yeah. what I understand. But then there was a lot of no shows at this meeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 What do you same. think about the implications of Tiger joining the board? I mean, I think it makes a big difference. Well, I mean, his voice carries a lot of weight. I'd say probably him and Rory are the two voices in golf that matter the most as far as the players. And, of course, Tiger's playing days are all but over, unfortunately. It, at least it appears. And so I, I, I like the fact that he wants to stay not only involved with the game at this level, but, you know, sort of – Move, you know, sway his influence around to make the game better and make it, you know, in a in a vision that you know his vision. Because uh, I, I think we can all pretty much agree if if Tiger says it's good, it's probably good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, first time in his 27 years on tour joining the PGA Tour Policy Board. I think it kind of shows a little bit of a support for Jay, but also maybe he's just thinking about Charlie being on tour in 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> he's sure. trying to set good it up point. for his son. You know. Very true. Point. Very true. You also have Bryson who goes out. Yes. He's a 58 live golf green briar fourth pro at the, they said like they had to like fra- rephrase it. It was like fourth pro at the top level. Right. Cause it's, it's a live golf situation. Uh-huh. And the funny part is right. It's like, yes, does he mash the ball? He does, but he hits the, he hits a 35 foot putt to win, which is super ironic. Um, yeah. And he had a bogey, which is right. crazy. And the crazy part is, you know, his excellency or whatever we call him, he was four shots away from that $54 million prize. Think about that. Like, yes, he shot to shoot 54, right? But like four more shots, he probably had them out there. He bogeyed one hole. Right. <laughs> Crazy. So, yeah. I mean, I don't care wherever it happens. I mean, last time was what, Furick in uh, 16 at the Travelers. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Bryson gets the win and it's all over social media. Then you had him and Phil. So yep. it was everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The Tiger, uh, or uh, Tiger, listen to me, Phil and Bryson thing. I have bookmarked on YouTube because I'm going back to watch it. Uh, they had a big wager. If, if you if you listen to the audio of Phil going through all the wagers, I mean, yeah, yeah, my yeah. goodness, he's That's, done it before. Harry. Oh yeah, once oh, yeah. or twice. This isn't his first rodeo. Phil and betting is no stranger to each other. <laughs> tremendous, oh, tremendous my. stuff. But you know, it all leads us to. The playoffs, the FedEx St. Jude Championship, the top 70. Then you go to the 50 for the BMW. All the big guns, right? Rom, mm-hmm. Rory, Scheffler. Uh, last year, he had Zal Torres who won it at, at 15 under and 21. He had Finau at 20 under. So there's some scores to be had out there. Uh, we will talk about the course, of course, with Harry Mays, yeah. TPC Southwind, Memphis. TPC um, Southwind, yeah. Yeah, but Harry, what are you thinking about, um, you know, just this tournament? And then we'll, we'll, we'll tee you up for the course, of course. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot at stake here because, you know, the next step is 50. You know, here you're at 70. The next step is 50 to get to the BMW out at Olympia Fields. But what that also gets you is into the signature events for next season. Ooh, if you get into the mm-hmm. top 50, you're automatically in those. And you know what that means. Like a bunch of these are no-cut events. It's guaranteed money. Ish. It's bigger money. It's more FedEx Cup points being doled out for these, these eight events. Uh, so there's a lot at stake. It's not just you know p- focusing on the top 30. That 50 number is going gonna, is gonna to become a big deal because of what it gives these guys next year as far as bigger money opportunities. There's also rider cup implications that that team is not you know there's a lot of rumors going around i know freddie couples on a radio show leaked a couple of names that he said were locks that aren't that would be (laughs) captain's picks and he's you know i think he said max homa uh cameron young which kind of surprised me a little bit and uh jordan spieth uh were basic locks you know is jt gonna get in there and you know he's out he doesn't have any more golf to play to work his way in but some of these other guys do fowler sam burns you know right Bryson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Brooks. You know, they still know right. how to play golf, just yeah. so we know, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there's there's a lot at stake. We got a couple of guys up at the top, Scotty Scheffler and Rory McElroy changing their putters coming in, you know, going from Scotty Cameron's to Taylor Made Spiders and reverse. You know, so there's a lot of lot going on here. Looking Tinkering. forward to it. Yeah. yeah, tinkering. Yeah, I want to know: could this be the last year that we see playoffs like this? Like nobody really knows, like right. what this realignment is going to look like. True. Like, yeah, very true. Yep, I'm kind of interested. Yeah. Like that's kind of like watching this. I'm like, is this the last time we see it like this? Yeah, it very well could be. It very well could be. So, Harry Mays, the course, of course. Tell us. 
Yeah, TPC Southwind uh, was made in the uh, late 80s, 88, 89, down in Memphis. Uh, par 70 for these guys, 7,200 yards. Not super, super long. There's only two par fives, number three and number 16, and they play as the easiest holes on the golf course. Six of the 12 par fours measure 450 to 500. So approach you know, shots to figure in here, 150 to 175 and 175 to 200 make up half of the approaches on the golf course if you're looking into uh, you know fantasy type stuff designed by ron pritchard now if that name sounds familiar it may be because you know that he was part of the redesign of the 1912 club hey now uh-huh along with uh tyler ray uh, a couple of years ago he's also a donald ross restoration specialist and a local guy i believe he's out of lansdale wow. uh, pa so he has the signature design he got a couple of of uh, tour pros, Fuzzy Zeller uh, and and company, you know, giving him advice while he designed it. But it's his design, Zoysia Fairways, Bermuda Rough and Bermuda Greens. It's right next to the FedEx campus. OK, I've been there. I came, I went to this event back in 2019 and sweated my tail off. It is, <laughs> it is hot. It is muggy. It's a swamp. It really is. But it's a great golf course and a great event. Uh, Brooks Kepka won it that, le- that year. And I took JT in my one and done. And I'm standing on the 18th tee watching him tee off. And the 18th hole is a dog leg, a severe dog leg left with water all up the left side, basically almost from tee to green. Okay. It's in play on both the shots. JT hooks his drive into the water and cursed himself up and down for the next 150 yards. I walked on the other side of the ropes, cursing him as well, because there, there went my tournament. Uh, but the back nine of this golf course is really, you know, is really the thing. The water hazards on the back nine are on 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 17, and 18. Oh, that's it? N- yeah, that's it. 94 <laughs> bunkers. Uh, there's an island green, the par 3 11th, which was fashioned after uh, uh, the par 3 17th at Sawgrass. There's you said a, the, bunkers. You give me flashbacks. I still don't have all the sand out of my shoes. from <laughs> PTSD. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, 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 but yeah. these don't look like Tillinghast bunkers. Okay, They're not yeah, as yeah, intimidating, yeah. but right, there's yeah. just a lot of them. Uh, the 14th is a par three over water. It measures 240 yards. 15, you got water up the left side. Um, and the creek is on the left. It, it, and then it kind of, there's an offset approach to the green, similar to the 11th at TPC Sawgrass and the, and the third at uh, Muirfield Village. 16th is a long par five. The 17th is a long par four with a small creek that bisects the fairway, an uphill approach to a, a tiered green. And then the 18th, uh, we described a lot of drama, a lot of water, and it should be awesome. Tremendous. Tremendous. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Um, you know, as we move into seeing the line with our friends at DraftKings, uh, don't forget from T to green, the best place to go to get in on all the action happening on the links is DraftKings Sportsbook. This week, new customers will receive an odds boost at plus 1000 to any pre-tournament wager up to $10 on any golfer to win. DraftKings will be featuring parlays and odds boosts all tournament long. So be sure to check out DraftKings Sportsbook app every day before the tournament starts to see what they have in store. I'm keeping my eye on Hideki here as a second in 2021, not a terrible number Mm -hmm. at 4,000, something to keep in mind. Eight of the last 12 finished T22 or better in the previous start here. And eight of nine had a T15 or better in one of the two final majors. So something to consider when you are making your selections. But download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code DING and boost your odds during this weekend's tournament. That's code DING, D-I-N-G, only on DraftKings Sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In Massachusetts, call 800-327-5050 or visit gamblinghelplinema.org. In New York, call 877-HOPE-NY. In Kansas, call 1-800-522-4700. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort Kansas, 21 plus in most eligible states, but age varies by jurisdiction. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash Sportsbook for details and state-specific responsible gambling resources. Harry Mays, how do you see the line here? <laughs> it's good. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Take, a breath. Yeah, Take a breath. Uh, but it's crazy. Some um, water. Yeah, right. <laughs> Andy Reid. Uh, none of the previous five winners of this tournament at this golf course are in the field, either due to being on the live tour, being injured in Zalatoris, or not qualifying in JT. Mm, I find that kind of interesting. Uh, driver accuracy and mid iron approach are, are premiums here. I'm going to go with Corey Connors in a matchup at minus 120 over Keegan Bradley. Sepp Straka, who you mentioned, uh, was in the playoff 
uh, last year, missed out. I'm going to take him over Cam Young at plus money in a, in a matchup. He's more accurate off the tee, and I just think that's going to be a premium here. Plus 115 for Straka. I'll also take him in a top 20 at plus 180. Uh, playing some really good golf. And also, Jason Day is a guy I'm yep. looking at. Minus 110 over Sam Burns in a matchup, and I'm taking him to win it at plus 3,000. I mean, he's got a T T6 and 20, a T10 and 18, and he was T2 in the open, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's he's playing great. Morikawa is another guy I'm looking at for a win. I was uh, just going to ask you, his what what do I get with him? Because he's sitting at number 57, and he's going to be trying real hard to yep. get to that 50 player. A lot player of love for him. Of. I'm not seeing it, but a lot of love for him. A lot of motivation for him, and he's very accurate with his driver. He doesn't hit it that far, as m- most of these guys, but he's very accurate, and he's one of the best iron players there is. The, the putter works, look out. Plus 2,200 for a win and plus 210 for a top 10 and can't lay out taking a top 10 at plus 150 all right danielle are you in the fantasy contest we launched it late yesterday i'm not sure i saw saw i saw it pop up we went and saw oppenheimer last night which was three hours of my life but i will be uh be entering a uh, lineup once we we get off this morning here and i have a feeling your top pick will be a man named scotty scheffler you guys know I love Chef. Like during the whole playoff, <laughs> like I will be watching, like to see if Rory or Rom or Chef, like who's gonna make like a strong claim to solidify that they were in fact the best player in 2023. So oh, yeah. obviously it's our top guys, and you know that I love Scotty, but um, you know I, I like Rom too. But we'll, we'll see. I'm well, not- watch out because I took Scheffler in my one and done. Oh. So be forewarned. <laughs> oh, sh- uh, yeah, only I could most a guy like Scotty Scheffler who has got 19 top 25s in his last 20 starts. What are you pouring wins. in your coffee here? Oh, <laughs> seven straight top fives. He's got 15 top 10s in his his last missed cut was this tournament last year. Oh, my God. Mm. Think about that. That is wild. That yeah. is wild. Yeah, He's I, changing I, his putter. Uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Very curious to see how that goes. You know, I talked about Hideki a little bit. Uh, like mm-hmm. I mentioned, second in 2021 yeah. at 4,000. Jason Day, I like it. I heard at 3,000 number. We talked about why. How about Denny McCarthy for, for hey. a plus 8,000 number? Like, why not? And then yep. also Harris English, who I've, I've been riding a little bit um, at 8,000. You know, a lot of people do like Finau for obvious reasons. Um, you know, I, I could see him winning this, but I, I'm leaning more towards some of the other guys I talked about a little bit earlier, but. Yeah, excited to watch this for sure. Yeah, I like your Denny pick coming off a missed cut last week, but I mean the way he rolls rolls his butter, like I feel like he can get hot at any moment. So Absolutely. I like that yeah. pick too. No doubt. Harry, talk to us about Mall Chevrolet a little bit, if you don't mind. Well, for eight years in a row now, you know, Mall Chevrolet, they've been South Jersey's number one Chevy dealer. Now, it could be because, you know, they treat their customers just right. That's why Mall Chevy, they've been voted a top 100 dealer in the entire country for customer satisfaction. But we still think it's because of that motto. We sell Chevys for less. So find your perfect drive at Mall Chevrolet. Visit Mall Chevrolet on Haddonfield Road in Cherry Hill, right across from the Cherry Hill Mall, or check them out online at mallchevy.com. Beautiful. Thanks to Kat Ramirez from Golfing Buddy for hopping on. We all think we have like plenty of friends to play golf with, but we've all had that time. Like, man, I'd love to get out tomorrow. You can't play. You have to work. You have the kids. So <laughs> give them a look. Give them a download. Maybe you'll meet some great people that are uh, like-minded and will become your golfing buddies for life, right? Yep. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. And don't forget to check out the women. We got the U.S. Uh, yes, or not the U.S., the Women's Open over in uh, – over in England at Walton Heath. It's a pretty cool golf course. Ashley Bu- or Ashley Buhai defends. And uh, Celine Boutier going for three oh, yeah. in a row. She's really hot. And it's also the shot. U.S. Uh, women's amateur is out at Bel Air Country Club. You don't get to see this golf course ever on TV. George Thomas design. It's very private, tucked in between, you know, right near UCLA's campus. It doesn't host any other events. So wow. if you want to check it out, Watch it on Golf Channel, the U.S. Women's uh, Amateur. Tremendous. And we'll be back uh, next week to recap the FedEx St. Jude's and look ahead to the top 50 for the BMW. See you next week.